I'm Nick Hughes, and this is Founders Live Conversations. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Founders Live Conversations. Uh, I am Nick Hughes. I'm the founder and CEO of Founders Live. Uh, we tell unique and inspiring stories of entrepreneurship here uh, online and really excited today to have a special, uh, two special guests, actually, uh, Sean and Carrie Beth McGarry uh, from Nine the Gallery. Really excited to hear much more about uh, your journey as entrepreneurs, your um, you know, your art gallery and the experience we've had over the last, you know, m a couple months and year, and as well as like anything else that we want to talk about. So uh, Sean and, and Carrie Beth, welcome to the conversation. Thank hey, you thanks. for having us, Nick. This is really cool. Yeah, it's great. Love it when I have uh, two guests right there in, 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 in the room. So this is going to be fun. Um, and before we get started, um, you know, this is a, a really a collaboration with Galvanize. Um, you're obviously a, a member there. And I want to bring in Alicia Hutchinson from Galvanize to say a few words, tell us a little bit more about Galvanize and, and really just um, not only that, but our partnership. So Alicia, if you are there and want to jump in here and say hi. Hi, everyone. Uh, good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are. Um, I also apologize if you hear a puppy barking in the background. Um, <laughs> but for those of you who are new to the Galvanized community, we bring entrepreneurs, students, and companies together under one roof to create a one-of-a-kind tech ecosystem. We offer co-working spaces and we're immersive education in software engineering and data science. Um, and through curated training, uh, through curated and organic or interactions, our members and students are immersed in a stimulating environment that fosters collaboration, innovation, and productivity. And we've partnered with Founders Live to have a galvanized member or a mentor spotlighted every month uh, during these conversations. Um, and we're super excited about them. We have them planned out until July. So uh, be on the lookout and yeah, I believe the next one is the first Thursday of May, although I do not know that number of the month right now. <laughs> <laughs> We're excited about that. Um, yeah, we, the you know, we have uh, Founders Live conversations every Thursday and uh, we're booked out until September now. It's crazy. Cool. So, um, you know, Alicia definitely uh, might want to take a look at that for for like down the line. But um, yeah, these are exciting. And, you know, we have a, a variety of different people in these conversations and really excited today to to hear about, you know, your story. Um, so what I would like to do is, you know, obviously this is going to be like kind of a cool um, kind of blend of, of both of your stories, but um, tell us a little bit more about yourself and a little bit of background. Let's kind of start, we'll start there, you know, a bit of your path and, and how you uh, got to uh, become as an entrepreneur and opening, you know, in, in especially in the art uh, industry and, and all that. Sure. Well, we've, we were both born and raised in Western New York. Um, we've known each other since we were 14 and 15, respectively. So we have, we have a long history yeah, yeah. together. Um, but, uh, you know, our paths kind of separated when we went to college. Um, I majored in theater and dance, toured, did touring Broadway for a while, um, went back and got my master's degree in arts management and ended up uh, managing the fundraising and development uh, department for a theater, a professional theater company in Buffalo um, for about five years before. And then I ended up eventually teaching with the master's program that um, I graduated from and then ended up moving to Arizona to join Sean back in 2012. And then I don't know if you want yeah, to add um, a little bit of your background too. Sure, I, I studied uh, organic chemistry and uh, an art history um, and when I was when I was going to school because I, wa I wanted to pursue a career in art conservation, which kind of blends those two very different fields and which I loved them both. And I realized that working in a lab was basically the job and it wasn't for me. I, I kind of needed to be more into it. So I took a different path and, and was an artist in actually Chicago for, uh, for from 2007 to 2000, 2010, and then moved to Arizona after that because I couldn't handle the cold anymore. <laughs> and, uh, and so I was a painter here. And then when Carrie Beth came and we started working together, we uh, our, our daughter, um, 
was born and we were, spent a lot of time in the house. So I was like, hey, I, I have this technique I can develop for painting and stuff like that. You want to do it just while we're hanging out? And so we started working as, as artists together. And then we got involved with Coachella uh, Music and Arts Festival with one of their arts programs there. Through Global Inheritance. Yeah. And then so we kind of kept snowballing as our artistic career. And then we uh, started the, we were a partner in, in the gallery, actually not in the gallery that we own now, was we were actually artists involved in that gallery first. Mm -hmm. And then, but we started kind of getting, immersing ourselves, realizing that, you know, a, a, an online presence was going to be important and social media and things like that. So as we kind of just bled into that part of it, we just, uh, and the, the, that owner at the time got uh, sick. And so she's like, I need, I can't do this anymore. Do you guys want to take it over? And we're like, that sounds great. You know, I've always wanted to do this. So that's kind of the strange progression. Like we never set out, we're like, we're going to own a gallery, but life kind of just uh, kind of unfolded and we just kind of rode the, rode the wave and, you know, couldn't be happier. This has been really, really cool opportunity. And it's been the people we've been able to connect with and what we've been able to do in, in Phoenix. It's just been really amazing. So that's kind of the background about how we got here. Yeah. I like that. I like that. And I want to dive into, um, you know, when artists and whether that's, you know, I, painting or physical art or musicians and in creating that sort of art, um, you know, what's interesting is, and I'm curious where you would fall in the line of this, which is, are you an artist or are you an entrepreneur, a business owner? There's obviously you're both, or there's like a, a both nature to that, but a lot of times, it's one or the other and then they kind of are like ah gosh I gotta like figure out the business nature or other other that side so what what would you say you both kind of fall into well I would say I definitely fall more into the business side of it I love making things I mean I've always enjoyed making things creating things dancing creating things with my hands but um when we took over the gallery as owners um definitely art fell kind of a little bit to, to, the, to, the, to the background for us. Um, we still work with Global Inheritance. We still work with Coachella when Coachella can happen again. Um, but for me, I would say much more, I'm much more on the business side of things as, as I think you are as well, but- That's I, a necessity. Yeah. So it, the idea of serving you know, your, your customers and that's the element of business, like what need are we fulfilling? And keeping that in mind, because a lot of artists will just want to make art, right? That's the thing without necessarily knowing where it's going or who needs it or, or why and asking those business questions. Who's your market? You know, things like that. And having that point of view and using the art aspect of it is what we're passionate about. We understand it. We're good at it. We are knowledgeable. Um, but translating that into a business, understanding who your customers are, what need you're serving, you know, that's business 101, how, how you're marketing, you know, what you're doing to, to, to let everybody know you're there and have a definition of why you exist in the first place. Like, what are you serving? And I think that's, that's, that's the real difference is that um, having an, an artist, artist background keeps the passion there, keeps the awareness there. And there's an element of cool that is necessary in, in that, in that yes. environment, in that space. So that knowledge of it is, and it's important that I think that we were artists, um, mm -hmm before that and, and that's something you can always come back to but the business side of it is is truly where, where we're understanding and, and trying to make our mark as far as defining customers um needs and and just those those things that are really important and so i would probably say that yeah and at that moment and especially when you uh discovered and had the opportunity to take over the ownership of, of this gallery um where did you go or what did you do to learn some of those aspects of business you know, marketing finding your customers you know at that time was there resources out there or how did you both go about like looking at each other saying like okay we gotta like we gotta do that we gotta figure it out well i think what's interesting about our model is you know we're we we consider ourselves two hands you know working on the same machine we do two different jobs within within the gallery model um Sean is out there. He is, he is the curator with his art history background. He's got such a strong knowledge of art history. So he approaches it from that angle. He's, he's out there talking, taking meetings and um, really is the face of the gallery most of the time. And I kind of stand, I, I kind of do the off, 
the 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 non-visual parts. I do the marketing and the website and making sure you know we get all of our products up online. And that. I think one of the things I've really liked was um, Stephen Blank had a book called the uh, the Founder's Playbook, I think, or something like that. Um, but it's something I go back to from time to time. He's a, an incredible writer and he's really about customer discovery. And one of the things that taking an ownership role is really digging into those questions about who you are, what you're doing and why. And I think that's been a really helpful because it's, it's a cyclical process. You have a, kind of an idea, test it out, see what happened and do it, test it out, see what happened. Cause, um, and that's, that's, that's just really can work with any business. That's what makes it so, so nice to use and as a great tool for, for exploring and really discovering your customer base. And that's one of the biggest things you can have a great idea, you know, but you don't want to necessarily have it built on, you know, wishful thinking. You want to define needs and how you're going to serve them and then have something that works and then just kind of have that cyclical. It's not like a business used to be start your idea and then finish it here. And that's your business model. You know, that, that doesn't really work that well. Um, especially nowadays, you really, it's, it's, it's not that simple. Um, and so that's been a great tool for us. I think understanding some um, basic branding, um, there's been like the Kellogg School of Branding has been a really good book that I've found. And, you know, I wish I had more time to read, but um, that's why I try to find out things that really work and just read them over again. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, it sounds crazy. Oh, and it's funny, uh, we saw a question about the background. So this is actually one of our pieces. Um, and so it's a, a take on an old Audrey Hepburn thing, but just like a, a silliness of the, the big googly eyes is kind of one of those things that um, okay. kind of a trademark of us as artists. So I, I just want to answer that question and that was a pretty cool one. And um, so the book that you just mentioned, uh, can you repeat it one more time? Stephen Blank is the author and I believe it's the, it's the startup. Oh goodness, of course, I'm going to blank on the name now. Um, should be the... We'll, we'll, we'll get to that because we have a request to have that be dropped in the chat as well. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm familiar with Stephen Blank, so I know that we might be able to pull that up as well. Um, the Startup Owner's Manual. Yeah, so that's what I was. Uh, that's it. So yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a fantastic read. It's really well done, and um, it's something I go back to as a resource at, at any, any moment where it's time to go back and rethink stuff. Yep. It's a great reminder. We both had our own copies. Yeah, we had our yeah. own highlighters. <laughs> yeah, it's a good one. It's one of my favorites. You know. Um, so I will, so we'll, we'll ask this question and then, you know, Kate, get ready to uh, jump into the conversation and, and provide some thoughts and questions, but uh, you both, okay. So, um, you know, creating a business with your partner uh, can be uh, tremendously amazing and it can be probably a bit challenging. So talk to us a little bit about that. Um, what would you say the tremendous positives are about it? And then the challenges that you've had to overcome? Well, I think, um, I think, the years that we spent painting together because that was that was honestly a really unique experience and a lot of people in the art world didn't understand how two different brains and two different people could work together on the same piece and on the same canvas or on the same work at simultaneously so i think we it was kind of we learned how to do that dance of working together um, through that experience to start with we learned also, I think, a lot about our own unique strengths and what we could bring to a project, what we could bring to design, what we could bring to execution. Um, so we, again, had that background going into um, taking over ownership of the gallery and developing the business. Um, I think there's a lot of positives. I mean, some of the challenges certainly are, you know, work, you never fully leave work. <laughs> I mean, we'll have, we'll, we'll get inspired and we'll sit down and have, you know, a business meeting at 10 o'clock at night because, you know, we finished homeschooling and our daughter's in bed and, you know, everything has been wrapped up for the day and we'll sit down and be like, this is, we really need to tackle this. Let's do this now. So I think, you know, it's fun and exciting and we make it as fun as possible, but I, I would say that there are some challenges as well. I don't know if you want to add anything. Yeah, I, um, it's like anything else. It's, um, you know, playing to your strengths is important. And I think having a good sense of humor about stuff and keeping it, you know, 
fun which i think is the is the minute it, it isn't fun like and not saying it's not hard work but it, when it can be fun and you know that that's really what was is the good part knowing who's good at what and if we can kind of keep each other in check it's like you know let's 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 divide and conquer here and because it can be overwhelming when you're doing it on your own and the other thing is that when you're working you know together you can kind of keep a check and balance on each other it's like you know did, did this get done I'm like oh i forgot you know i yeah. you know i totally that thank you so much for reminding me i would have totally spaced on that and you know that's the sort of thing that is really 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 advantageous and really helpful yeah. and um i would also add like not letting ego get in the way which I have to constantly remind myself. <laughs> I am guilty as, you know, but um, yeah, just really making, sh trying to keep ego out of it as much as possible because, um, you know, like I said, we've got different strengths and playing into our strengths is what makes the business successful. And if we get ego involved with, you know, who's doing what or, who's getting credit for what or what's going, you know, what's going on, you know, what the perception is, then it gets, then it can get a little sticky. So I const that's one thing I constantly try to remind myself. Mm. Yeah, I guess. I mean, it's, it's always, we've always worked under the name FunWow is our business name too. And so, um, so it's kind of a fun behind the scenes for a lot of it where, you know, there's not too much attention on one of us or the other, um, other than things like this, but, um, yeah, what else is, I mean, I, I think it's more fun. I mean, there's always going to be anything. It's like, but we got married because we were best friends and we were doing this because we we're best friends. And, you know, that's like, that's part of the fun of it. And um, luckily we both have the same passions and and really kind of opposite strengths, yeah. um, to be honest. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. There, there, I just want to point out, you know, uh, there's some comments here, uh, you know, the real art here is working with your mate, endless potential, inspiring, you know, Michael saying awesome. that, um, you know, it's really cool. Um, and, you know, what you pointed out is absolutely true, uh, whether you're working with your your life partner or not, which is is really fun. And it's what Founders Live really stands for. Uh, one of our core values really orients around um, you know, fun, casual. And, you know, I, I say this a lot with founders is look, you know, you, of course, it's a business and you, you're creating something and you want it to be, um, you know, scalable and, and sustainable. But if you as the owner and the, the founder are not still having fun, there, there's some things that you need to look at. And, and, yeah. and I think life is, you know, ironically, life is too short to do that but it's also a long path and oh yeah 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 <laughs> so for sure it's, it's the same right it's like uh oh, life's too short to do that but no no it's actually a long time and you are to be building something you should be enjoying it you should feel like it's um uh having a positive impact in the way that you enjoy doing that and in impacting people so yeah hope, yeah that's interesting yeah and taking have a good sense of humor about it you know it, it, and having the things don't work out uh you know is in, in how you see them coming and you know the smallest interactions can make the biggest biggest uh effect on something and sometimes the, what you put so much effort into won't do very much at all and yeah. and having the sense of humor about that and that's just how it goes you know for any any success story ever it's like we didn't give up that was yeah. that was the motto right or mm -hmm. you know or we had to make changes but we didn't give up and, and that was, that's cause it can be a long ride. <laughs> yeah. I always, I always think about like one of the things that kind of pops up in my brain from time to time is uh, what was it? The Melissa and Doug story. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's like, a really good one. When Melissa and Doug, the, the toy founders started off their business. Um, I think it was like, they said something like it was five years that they worked together as partner, life partners and business partners. And they ate ramen noodles every day for five years trying to get it off the ground and it looked like it was going nowhere every single day looked like it was going nowhere it looked like it was going nowhere and then one day they got up and it went somewhere and it took off and it became what it is now and so I think I always go back to that you know when things I mean we all have days where it seems like it's so challenging and why you know why why are we doing this and there's obviously there's positive days to balance those out as well 
but that's something I always go back to is that model that, you know, right. getting up and getting up, putting in the work, doing it because, you know. It's like, right. Like trying to, that sometimes it feels like you're trying to start fire with wet wood, right? And so you're like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> you know, like let's, yeah. let's figure this out. And, but, and that's, that's a common thing. And it, you know, that's where you kind of have to trust yourself and white knuckle yeah. it and, and have a good sense of humor about it. Cause like, here we, here we go. This is, you know, this is, this is the fun part and kind of laugh at it a little bit and, you know, get through it. Cause that's the easiest way to do it. The minute you take it too seriously, it's like 50% of success is luck anyways. You know, yeah. it just is that, that, that's the weird part of it all. And you, it's like, if you've ever seen the Olympics, you know, people can put in their best time ever and still lose. That's how it goes. Right. And you can see people that, you know, hit every bump along the way and somehow manage it and that's life and that there's a sense of humor about that but that's why they're done every four years like you know it's not just one and done right that's that's life there's always there's always the next round it's cyclical so um, um it's, it's fun to um, i want to bring in uh kate uh if you want to um unmute and and jump in here uh she had a, a question really orienting around you know getting you know really getting people interested and and even you know in you know invested in the gallery and and maybe just Kate want to provide a little bit more uh, background uh, context on this question. Uh, probably a good topic here. If you're there. <laughs> uh, so Kate, let, let us know uh, when you want to jump in here. Great, great. Hi. Yeah, there you are. There you are. Okay, so um, I'm definitely involved with several art communities and gallery uh, in galleries. I think you've already answered my question. I think that your guys your guys' angle on getting investment and everything in what you do is that fun you have as a couple and that probably is playing off a lot. I have to do a lot more. I'm, I'm working from a humanitarian angle and um, a world change angle. So I, I think that like I think that like I've already sort of like you know I mean you can also tell me of course anything you're doing business and to uh, you know, drive uh drive engagement to uh to certain pieces or events or what have you but i i think i've already nailed what the difference is in the two situations so I, i'm happy to listen to what you've got though one of the things that has been a big focus for me um is is really getting involved with artists in the community i think one of the the hard parts is that it's easy for people to be alienated and so art and artists are our currency so I really think it's important for to get people together as much as possible. And one of the things I've done over the last couple of years is set up um, artist critiques with artists only environments where it's something that doesn't happen except in an, in an, uh, in a, an academic situation. And sometimes those can be a little harsh because you have the teacher trying to rip up, you know, and get everybody's ego a little down by, you know, picking out and ripping them up part. And I think there's a place for that. Um, but that's not what we do and what you know, how this works, what we do is organize, you know, maybe like anywhere from like four to eight, nine artists at the same time. And everybody comes in and just talks about the work that they're working on for five minutes and then to get feedback for five minutes. So it's really quick, it's really short. So it's not like you have to sit, I'll go up there and present, but everybody does it and everybody participates and you get, you know, people that would never have hung out with each other in any other environment talking about the same thing that everybody's really passionate about. So you see people from any, all ages, from all backgrounds coming together and just talking and getting involved. And it's a little scary because, you know, like any sort of public speaking opportunity, it's a little risky and you're talking about your own stuff. But once it starts going, everybody realizes that there's they have so much in common and everybody walks out of it, like not only with a new group of people that they didn't really know that well before, but new observations on the pieces and the works that they're working on. So it really has been incredible to see how these people were able to bring together, also connect with each other and start to kind of form this, this really tight community based on the thing that we love. And it's not like we're going and hanging out at a party, or something like that. Like, no, we're talking about art in a gallery, in a setting that is artists only. So you're not getting feedback from necessarily people that don't have any experience or don't know really what they're talking about. And there's a freedom in that and it's really encouraging and you can kind of want to keep doing it. It's really exciting to be part of it. And people that, you know, after they're like, Sean, that was so cool. I had no idea. And, and, and it's something I'm really excited about and something finally we're able to do again. Like the last times we did them was 
in November of 2019. And, and just over the last month or so, nice. I've been able to run this, the, the next round of them. And it's just, nice. it's been really nice to, yeah, it's been really nice to see that it's this, the same formulas working and, and seeing these artists like connect with each other on Instagram and stuff like that. And like seeing it, the kind of ripple effect where people feel part of something, not just themselves and feel connected. And I think that's really important and it's been successful so far. Also, I'm gonna, um, if you're interested in connecting, you know, art with a humanitarian aspect to it, um, I would suggest taking a look at an organization that we work with um, called Global Inheritance. Okay. They, they're an excellent model for connecting, using art as a vehicle to promote environmental awareness and using, um, and connecting and partnering with organizations like um, Coachella Music Festival and Stagecoast Music Festival and using those as a stage to use the art to get their message out. Um, we've been work we've worked with them for five years now. Yeah, 2016. Yeah. So, um, but but it's a really good model if you're not familiar with the organization. It they've they've done a great job of coming up with creative ways to use art to get their message across. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. I will check that out. I appreciate it. Thank you for thank you so much yeah. for. Uh, for hearing out my questions. I appreciate you guys. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Yeah, this is the stuff we love. <laughs> Very great. Yeah, I shared I shared that link actually. Um, Perfect. Oh, awesome. Great. Yeah, shared it. Uh, That's so cool. So shifting shifting into um, how the last year, you know, tell us a little bit more about your experience around the the impact of the pandemic, and then let's talk a little bit like how you're mentioning the the shifts and transitions. Well, I think. Um, you know, we've always marched to the beat of our own drum a little bit. And there's traditional gallery models. And when we took over the gallery, what we really started focusing on, and obviously this was pre-pandemic, um, we really started focusing on elevating our social media, strengthening our social media presence, rebranding, and getting, out, getting everything online. At the time, um, at the time, a, a, many of the local galleries weren't posting artworks for sale on their websites. Um, so they weren't able to reach a broader market. Um, we got involved with uh, the Artsy platform, which I don't know if you want to talk a little bit more about, but that gave us a platform with which to get not only our shows out to literally an international market, but be able, it provided another vehicle for us to sell the works um, globally. And so we started building that from day one when we took over the gallery. So then when the pandemic hit, thankfully we had that foundation already in place. So we were able to then just have the creative conversation of, okay, so we don't have a walkthrough space anymore. How are we going to take that experience and bring it to people in their homes? And that's when we started having the conversation. We started developing um, online interviews with artists. Um, so we would have the artists present the show in their own words. I started video editing, which I hadn't done since college. <laughs> so I put that skill to work and, you know, Sean would conduct the interviews. And then I think we really finally, it came together when we developed um, the capsule collection and the capsule collection interviews. So what the capsule collection was for us is it was five shows highlighting the pillars of artistic discipline. So we had uh, realism, pop, figurative works. We had photography, collage, and print, and we had abstract. And for each of those shows, we had guest curators come in and they, we, through Zoom meetings, we curated, you know, we put out calls for art for each of them. We, we curated the shows together. And then we posed, instead of the artists talking specifically about the work themselves, we posed a question to all of the artists that were involved in the show. And we, we recorded those interviews and we edited those interviews together um, to present the show in the artist's own words as they explored that particular question about their particular um, discipline and genre of art. So that was kind of a more creative way than, you know, us walking through the gallery and showcasing the pieces or having the artists themselves just talk about the pieces themselves. And so that was that that's that's kind of where you know we 
how we pivoted. <laughs> I don't know if you want to add anything to that. The interviews were great. It was, yeah. a, it was a way, something that was able to be done that actually jumped past what we were able to do in a physical spot. Because if people weren't there on opening night, you know, maybe you wouldn't be able to see it. But now that we've been able to do this in a recorded way, people could come back to it and watch it when they want. And if we've learned anything from, from the pandemic, it's that the, being the king of convenience is kind of the way to go. And to be able to present something that kind of lends itself to somebody's convenience level. So, okay, so I can't get out and go to this because maybe I work on Friday nights or whatever, but you'd be able to kind of catch up with it after and still be able to experience it the same way that everybody else did. And eventually when it goes back to a live model, um, I, I think I still want to yeah. have that as part of it. I still want to have these interviews done and be available to everybody. So I think the things that we're learning from this point to be able to really what's what's come to light and maybe seen the cracks in the system to be able to use what we've able to pivot with and then kind of introduce that back into it to to kind of make it stronger and that's that's what we're, i'm kind of really excited about is that not looking at it as a whole loss but as a time to see other things that have been necessary that can still be there you know when things move forward yeah and another thing we did too was um we used to do solo shows um, so one artist, a featured artist, and then we did maybe one or two group shows throughout the year. And when the pandemic hit, we started focusing a lot more on group shows, um, primarily because we were putting it out on a virtual, you know, virtually and not in a physical space. It made it more, it made it more interesting for people who came to our, who landed on our social media pages to see the variety of different artists, um, as opposed to just highlighting one artist in a given month. So that was that was another change that we. Yeah, what I wanna point out here, which is so great is, I mean, you, uh, like a lot of people had to, you just had a, had a shift and uh, you forwardly thinking you had something already in place uh, that you had, you know, was able to kind of take further um, but obviously the interviews kind of like what we're doing here. And, you know, we, you know, I've we've been doing, been doing these for a long time. Um, you know, uh, kind of side note, this is, this is, this is now Nick talking off the cuff. Um, starting in like 20, 2012, I started shooting interviews professionally, having a professional videographer, we would shoot these interviews like this and it was called founders raw. And it was, uh, it was totally before Founders Life started, um, called Founders Raw. So if you um, if you Google uh, Founders or if you like, on YouTube, if you if you find you know you'll find some interviews Founders Raw, and that was like me ten years ago, nine years ago. Um, but doing interviews and stuff, right? Talking with people and and really getting content experience, like perspective, and you know it's just amazing. And so you were able to keep momentum and this is the key that i want to tie in here is um being able to keep the momentum and activity up when certain activities of physical walking into a store were not available and and i think that brands and the companies that that you know survived and, and did okay in 20 in 2020 going into 2021 were figured out ways to do that, whether restaurant was like, hey, takeout, you know, um, they kept the momentum up. Um, you were able to create information, activities, experiences, uh, the shows that you actually streamed uh, virtually. And quite frankly, those are going to stick, you know, like, um, and, and so this is a transition to, you know, Tony, get ready next. But um, how about, you know, what do you think is now going to stay as we go back to whatever we're going to go back to, um, based on what you just described, what do you think is going to stick? And then maybe what do you think is going to like, ah, you know, we'll, we'll probably, that was a temporary thing, but we'll probably not do that as the world kind of goes back to what we are going to go back to. I think one of the main things is that doing interviews from each other's homes. <laughs> <laughs> so it's one of those things that you can't always control um, the lighting and things like that. And so it was one of the mm. things like if we could change anything, yeah. having like a, an environment, and I mean, this is something we'd love to do at Galvanize because the, the interior is just, just drop dead gorgeous and perfect for it. 
and to have that like lighting in that scenario and doing like a face-to-face -face interview where you can kind of have don't have like the time lag so that's that's definitely one thing yes. um I, I, I plan on changing when when it's a little bit more safe but to, keeping the interviews yeah tech, keeping the interviews sure. is great I, I you know in in I think I think having the the online presence is important. Um, oh, live openings is going to be interesting because I think people are going to like reworking how we want to have the model and, and who we want to talk about. Um, I think I think that's something that's going to be exciting to get back to. Um, we're not planning anything until you know the late end of the year probably just because you know we it's it's still you know and everybody's got their personal thing, but I think as far as being responsible um for encouraging yes. everybody to get together i think i think patience is always a good idea like, yeah. not rushing it like let's be you know we're, we're th it can wait you know and it's like looking back at what it was like going through 10th grade you know it seemed like during it like oh it's taking forever but in the grand scheme of things it's really not that big and you know being patient about it is something that that i think is really important yeah so i um Along these lines and, and where things are going, there's a lot of talk of, um, you know, the NFT movement, this like, and, and so we want to bring in Tony, he's got a question around uh, the the recent uh, purchase of, um, you know, a piece of art. Um, a lot of art is now being purchased through NFTs, uh, non fungible tokens. So um, Tony, uh, jump in here and, and give a little more context. And then we'll, we'll probably spend a little more time on this topic. Yeah, um, so thank you very much. Um, so I just wanted to know, like, obviously, you know, this NFT thing, you know, these crypto uh, art uh, things are, are, you know, they made the news because there's a lot of talk about cryptocurrency and blockchain and all this stuff. And um, obviously, it's like a wild west. And, you know, what I wanted to know was, would you, would your gallery consider um, you know, taking part in this kind of trend, looking into this trend, or would you stick with more of your current um, business model? And then the second question that popped into my head was, with the pivot that you made in 2020, did you find that you made about the same or more or less than in terms of revenue compared to 2019? Thanks. Uh, well, I'll tackle the first part first. So, um, as far as the NFTs go, I think this is I think this is an amazing revolution that's finally happened. I've been we followed lots of digital artists for a while, like people the who who really made headlines for selling um, every day, which was actually a collection of work that he had done um, for years, really. And the beautiful part of that is that it was sold as one big NTF, but um, or FT, sorry, but it was actually a lot of them at once. And so the value of it wasn't just like buying one painting or something like that. It was actually it, it, an entire collection, which I thought was brilliant. And to be able to have uh, a currency for these digital artists and the way for them to be compensated correctly for their work is, is really something I am so thrilled to see. And I can't wait to get involved. There's a few artists that I know that that have worked in this in this digital realm and have really been unappreciated in my opinion until this has started to kind of come to light. And I, I think we're seeing something really quite marvelous to have this, um, this new medium that hasn't been, I mean, the technology being used is on the grand scale of art is, is just such a new thing and that we're using our new technology and, uh, and you know, our, our understanding of currency and to be able to to do this has been really fantastic and and i i'm so excited that this is this has come i'm so excited to get involved with it i think a lot of artists are going to come to light in this now that they've like they don't have to work for video game companies i mean they probably do but the, now they're able to express themselves in a way to be compensated for it to be to be seen as the artists that they are for the work that they put in and and it i just i just think it's fantastic and and to see what one person can do versus you know working on a team of designers that we usually see in the in the digital realm um with movies and things like that these are teams of people and to see what one person usually can do and which is i think the really cool part of this is it's not like a production house this isn't studio ghibli or you know 
um, industrial light and magic. This is one person working with their unique defined vision um, like an artist. And I, 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 I think it's great. I think it opens up the potential to have events that uh, these sort of digital things can be released in different places at the same time. Something that is not done with the, with the normal media that we're used to. So it really gives the opportunity to, to think outside of convention to, to bring it to light and to, and to make them really, you know, a, something that can be sold that, that could be profitable for, for everybody. And that that's the overall goal. And the second thing to answer about like how the, how the gallery did perform financially, I, it was, we were just as surprised as anybody. We, we, we did, you know, just as well as any other year we've done it, if not a little bit better, which was, which blew our minds. Um, it was really strange that people came from out of the woodwork and collectors, you know, really hit us up and it, it was, it was a good year. Yeah. So. We were, we were shipping out to the East coast. We shipped out to Milan. We shipped out to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It just, just all over. It was, it was really fantastic. And I think um, I wish I had an exact reason why, and that's part of the, the fun of it all. And it just, it was, you know, I think who we were working with was obviously one of the bigger things and how we were doing it. Um, and, and that's, uh, it was, it was, it kept us going, you know what I mean? It was one of those motivating things where like, okay, let's, let's keep doing this, you know, that little day by day. All right, let's, let's keep going. Here we are. Um, you know, it, it was a, it was a surprise, but a, a, certainly a welcome one. Good. Good to hear. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah th thanks, Tony. Um, great questions there. Luis, uh, jump in here when you're ready. And um, I know you got some thoughts. Um, so uh, for all transparency, Luis is a part of the Founders Life team and we, you know, we, we have this like back and forth conversation on, on NFTs and, and very, very interesting uh, development uh, in not just art, but a lot of other things. So uh, Luis, if you want to jump in here um, and, and provide your thoughts and questions, you know, feel free to do that. Um, just uh, checking things out there. But, um, you know, I think that, um, do you, in this area, are, is, there, is there an area that you're concerned about with digital? Um, the way I view it, and I'm not expert in your industry, but there is a nostalgia of walking through a gallery, uh, looking at a um, piece physically and um, uh, appreciating art in the physical realm. And we, we're not going to go 100% away from that. But if we go digital, there's just different dynamics. Do you do you have any concerns around uh, that the pendulum would swing too far? What if the lights go out? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, it's essentially based on electricity. And, and so there is that to it, uh, you know, and there are limitations to how do you, how do you properly hang it as an appreciative object, right? So is it, is it a screen based? Is it so if you're looking at a larger screen or a smaller screen, which is it supposed to be, you know, and that's very true. And this is so is it can it can it be rendered to the size of, you know, the side of the Goodyear blimp or is there is there limitations on what you purchased as far as like pixelation and size wise. So there are dozens of issues that can be run into. And I think sometimes people either don't confront those or, or you know, in the buzz of it all don't really consider that. Like, is well, this, yeah, right? I would just say, sorry to cut you off, but I would just say like, this is what innovation is all about. So we are, whether we were forced it to happen because of the pandemic challenge, or there was just an evolution in, in, in your industry specifically, but my guess is five years from now, this, this is, has been an inflection point on new ways of like, and I was listening to a podcast recently, and basically the answer is, well, what is art? And that's a question, but the answer is the art is in the view of the beholder. Like art is simply what someone is viewing something in, in a, an artistic form, and that can be contextualized or it's, it's subjective to the, the person viewing it. And when you start involving technology, um, we're starting to look at ways that new experiences of art sensually, so all the senses can actually be brought to us, right? And then digital um, 
you know, basically digital stamps of ownership and or, you know, um, proprietary and then ownership and payment. Now we're talking about a whole new realm. So I think it's really interesting to see what the next, you know, five to 10 years does to an industry such as yours. Yes, I, I, I'm excited for it. I think it's great. I think to fight these sort of things is always a losing battle. And I, I think what, what I would do is like, all right, well, if, if I could collect a few, what would I do with them? And the first thing I would do with them is I would get, you know, a proportional screen TV and right in the walkway, I would just have it on a loop. That's the fun part. And just like anything else, like this is what this is. This is where we're at. This is why this is important. This is what this does. You know, if I had a, if I had a Beeple loop that I would just be able to install and let it go. And that would be, that would be what it was. And people walk in and if they knew what it was, I, they'd be like, that's a people. I'm like, yep. Yeah. And if they didn't know, I'd be like, let me show you what this is just like yeah. I do for anything else. Um, and I, I think that that's what I would do with it. So where it's going to go, I have no idea, but if, if what I would do with it right now is exactly that. And I would have, it's something that if I was going to say, release a show, I would say, hopefully coordinate with a lot of people at one time to be able to release it at the same time. So everybody could experience it at the same time. So everybody could have a little bit of ownership. They wouldn't own it, but they could be able to experience it. And that's the difference with this media that's any different than anything else. Like if, if it was released on one night, everybody could pull open their phone and experience it together. in the moment together, yeah. which I think is just the coolest concept. And yeah. so for me, building on how that can be done and, and reproduced is so that's what I would do with it. And that's what I, that's what I want to do with it. And I, so what, what's going to happen? I have no idea. Maybe, you know, that'd be like saying my space is the future, who knows, but you know, the medium is the message here. And I think that it's not going away. And we are in a time where this digital art and this digital experience is something that is unique in, and I think the leveraging the uniqueness of it is the real important part. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And we are, this is flown by we're coming to the end of the hour here we're close um i want to i you know and if anyone has any other quick questions uh feel free to jump in and or you know type them or let's let's get to you but um you know what would you both let's go with both of you uh one suggestion um either so this is a like choose your own adventure question um either one like an advice of previous, like, hey, this is what I learned, you know, maybe it was a mistake or just like a, a, a really good, strong piece of advice that you, you heard previously that you apply still. Or secondly, forward thinking, looking, knowing that things are shifting and changing quickly, your just perspective on advice to entrepreneurs, maybe to think about how to go forward or the like advice you had up to this point. So let's go with um, Carrie Beth first. You go you first. Go first. <laughs> I gotta think about it. All right. Um, I think uh, getting stuff in writing is, mm, is yes. I think, probably the biggest thing for anybody to hear. Get it in writing. That It's that simple. Get it in writing. That's it. That's it. I like that. That's yep. it. Yeah. I would have, you know, time and time again, you know, that is a get it in writing. Yeah. This is uh, for everyone, yes. And um, a common or at least like I, I just had a recent uh, podcast, another podcast interview. And, and that was one of the, the topics that came up at the end as well. Just, you know, uh, especially with friends, you know, like mm -hmm. casual acquaintances and, you know, things can start popping up and um, it feels awkward. Just, you know, just, of course it, it does, you know, it can be awkward to be like, Hey, here's this document or here's an NDA and here's a thing, but, uh, that's business and yeah. that's business baby. That and that's it's so important and for if you can't get past the awkwardness you probably should rethink what you're doing right. you know right. it's, it's true and that's and that's the thing because that if that awkwardness is the hard part it's going to get a lot worse it is sure. <laughs> you know <laughs> and, and and getting it in writing and having those tough conversations is is really important and and you know because when it's done everything's smooth there's no, oh no, it, like all that weird emotional stuff is done. It's, it's already taken care of. Get it in writing, talk about the money first and then, and then move forward. And if any of that's a stumbling point, that should be a red flag and abort. Agreed. All right. And uh, Carrie Beth. I would say, and I constantly have to remind myself of this, is be flexible. 
be willing to be flexible. Um, the way things have always been done um, or just that's the way we do things is, is never the answer and it's never gonna lead to success and it's never going to lead to growth. Um, I'm, a, I'm very much by the books myself. I like things, I like order, I like consistency. Um, so, so yeah, just being able to be flexible and think outside the box and challenge what, challenge what the norm has been and see how you can make it different and make your mark, your own unique mark with your product, with your brand, with whatever you're trying to put out into the world. Oh, that was great. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that as well. Um, you know, just, um, you know, like, if this kind of goes back to the the have fun and, and just really locking into that that deeper purpose and, and really asking yourself, why are you doing this? Um, you know, that's a big one too. So, what do you want? Right. Yeah. Like answering that question. <laughs> what do you want? Uh, I think it's huge. Yeah. And, and actually you bring up a great point. It's in, and you know, in working together and living together and everything happening in the same time, you know, like he'll walk through and he'll just be like, what do we want? What do you want with, what do you want with the gallery? What do we want? And it'll be like, I'm making dinner and, you know, just, but constantly, and there's, and it, there's not always an answer. There's not always an answer in the moment, but yeah. making sure that we're constantly asking those questions and putting those questions out there and keeping them somewhat in the forefront of our mind constantly, even when we're not in gallery mode, but thinking, thinking about those and, and trying to find those answers is huge. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. Well, uh, wow, you both, this has been this has been a really amazing conversation. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, this has been fun. We love talking about it, and, and the invite was amazing. Jumped right on it. This is great. And yeah, um, thank know, you these, so much for having us. These are the these are the minds we love yeah. to be around. You know, people that are curious, inspired, intelligent. Um, this is this is it. This is our people. Awesome. And what, um, you know, so I dropped in the, the website URL again, but what social platforms can they also find you on? We're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, and we're on Twitter. Yeah, all at Nine the Gallery. Yep. So it's okay. pretty consistent, which we're, it's kind of nice. And last question for me anyway, and yeah. I think you know, uh, let's hear a little depth on the name. Which one? The Nine? Or Fun Wow. <laughs> Yeah, no, nine, nine, the gallery, you know, the nine, tell us about that. It, that's a great question. We actually inherited it. And what I loved about it was it was the fact that in branding, you know, having something simple that you know what it is, is something I always thought was fascinating and really cool. And so when we were part of the gallery, that was really one of my interests in, in getting is because you just, it's easy to remember. It's not like a longer name that might be misspelled. It's just nine, like you can be drilled down to just the number. And um, I wish I had a great mystical answer about what it is. It's just, it's just, that's what it is. And yeah, it was, it, was a, it was a lucky number, spiritual number for the original founder of the gallery. Yeah. And um, that's, that's really, I mean, Wayne Gretzky is 99. So that's always good. <laughs> I don't know if anybody likes hockey, but he's the great one. So um, yeah, yeah, that's that's really it. Uh, we love inherited. It. I loved it. The love the idea that it'd be easy to brand, and that's really the, the history for me, anyways. Cool, yeah. cool. Love this. Yeah. <laughs> the fun wow story is a lot more interesting. <laughs> yeah, that's like our, our DBA is fun wow. So that's like our like our tax forms and stuff like that. That's our artist name. So that's that's a little different. Yeah, that's but... our blanket company. Yeah, that, that nine, <laughs> nine is a DBA under under oh, fun wow yeah. LLC. Yep. And, so. Um, that one, that one is a unique story. Um, if we have a second, that um, go ahead, go ahead. When we when we started painting and we started um, getting involved with Global Inheritance and Coachella, um, we needed to have social media platforms. And at the time, we had just been painting for ourselves. We weren't painting professionally yet. And so when we got accepted to show. Um, we didn't have socials and they said, well, we need your website. We need your socials and everything else. And, oh, we can't have two people listed. We can only list one artist's name. So you have to come up with an artist's name for yourselves. So I came to him one night at like nine o'clock at night and said, what domains do we have? 
and who do we want to be? And he said, I've got fun. Wow. And I said, great. And so I sat down, built a website, built our socials. Um, and the unique thing about fun. Wow is, uh, there was an artist named Mark Freeland who was Buffalo based. He was based out of Buffalo. We both knew him in different capacities uh, when we were younger. And he had a piece um, where he was going through uh, his cancer treatment and he's got some books of his work. And in one of the books of his work, there's a piece that he had done um, and in a thought bubble over, over the man's head, it says, fun wow. And so that was kind of the inspiration for setting up Fun Wow is, is through that piece. Uh, and then there ironically was also a theme park that was close to where we grew up where um, their theme song was Fun Wow. Right, was, it, yeah, it was, it was, it, it's, it's, and it was like, the, there was two of us. It was like the fun and the wow. The fun and the wow. So <laughs> made sense. Right. And now we've, and now we have to live with it. <laughs> it's, yeah, it was, it, it, yeah. So it's a more, that was more of a personal story. So that, that's kind of the fun part of it. So I love it. Well, you know, Sean and, and Carrie Beth, this has been uh, amazing. And uh, thank you both so much. Keep, keep up the good work. And I want to continue to see what, you know, what comes out of uh, Nine the Gallery uh, as we move forward here. Yeah, thanks so much. This is a real pleasure. I love Thank talking you. about it. And thanks for the opportunity. And thanks everybody for listening and, and jumping in and any of the questions. If we didn't answer it, um, hit us up on like Instagram or something like that. I'm happy to talk and just let's, uh, let's get to know each other. It's great. Well, thank you. Thank you. And uh, thanks, um, Alicia, again, and Galvanize, uh, th such a great uh, organization, um, community, and everyone check them out if you can. And, you know, once one, as we're getting back into the real world, check their places out as well, their locations, perfect place. It's a beautiful space. And, and oh my gosh, oh, Galvanize so... is, we're so proud to call it home. Yeah. And it's really beautiful. And the vibe there is just unmatched. And if being around, like you are your environment and that's the, that's the real truth of it. And everybody there is so cool, so sharp, so smart. And just being in that is really inspiring. So that's been a, a, a tremendous gift that we're really lucky to be there. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Not yeah. even at that campus. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's how it is. And it's, it's, it permeates the walls. It, it's in yeah. everything there, uh, the attention to detail and, and, you know, the management is incredible everybody feels like really welcomed. It's just, it's like nothing else. And it's, it's, it's something that like really is, we're so proud to be there and everything about it. So I'll stop gushing, but it's really how we feel. Well, all right. Well, thank you. We all got to, we need to move on. So um, thank all right. you. All right. Uh, you got it. Hey. Uh, yep. This is hey, Founders hey, Live Conversations. So uh, Nick Hughes as the founder and CEO of Founders Live, um, bringing this to you today and uh, everyone keep listening, keep checking things out. We have these every single week. Uh, so keep your eye out. And lastly, just, hey, stay healthy and stay safe out there. That's what I'm saying.